Today, we are covering a tragic and deeply impactful event that unfolded in Cameron, Wisconsin in April 2023. This heartbreaking story revolves around the fatal shooting of two young police officers, Emily Breidenbach and Hunter Scheel, by Glenn Douglas Perry. He's got a rifle. He's got a rifle. Shots fired! Shots fired! This incident not only left a community in mourning, but also reignited important conversations about mental health, gun access, and the safety protocols in place for law enforcement. Join us as we delve into the details of this tragic encounter, the lives of the officers who bravely served their community, and the broader questions this event has raised. Officer down! Officer down! Officer down! The events surrounding the fatal shooting of two Wisconsin police officers by Glenn Douglas Perry in April 2023 stunned the community of Cameron and reignited discussions on mental health, gun access, and law enforcement safety protocols. On April 8th, Perry, 50, from New Auburn, opened fire during a routine traffic stop, killing two officers, Emily Breidenbach of the Chetek Police Department and Hunter Scheel of the Cameron Police Department, in a premeditated and deadly encounter. Both officers were young, dedicated, and known for their commitment to the community, making their loss deeply felt by local residents and law enforcement alike. The tragedy unfolded after Officer Breidenbach, 32, spotted Perry behind the wheel in Cameron, Wisconsin. He had an outstanding warrant for unpaid child support, which, combined with recent warnings from his family, heightened her concerns. Perry's family had reported that his mental health was rapidly deteriorating, and they informed local authorities that he was heavily armed and potentially dangerous. The day before the shooting, Perry's father warned the Barron County Sheriff's Office that his son was struggling mentally, seemed agitated, and carried a gun at all times. Based on this report, Captain Jason Hagen of the Barron County Sheriff's Office issued an alert to local law enforcement, urging officers to exercise caution when interacting with Perry. Breidenbach, who had been informed of this alert, decided to call for backup as she prepared to conduct the traffic stop. Hunter Scheel, 23, from the neighboring Cameron Police Department, responded to her call, and the two officers proceeded to pull Perry over on Highway SS. As Officer Breidenbach initiated the stop, Perry abruptly stepped out of his vehicle holding an AR-15 rifle. Without hesitation, he aimed the weapon at Breidenbach and opened fire, fatally wounding her almost immediately. She managed to radio a brief alert, he has a gun, before collapsing from her injuries. Officer Scheel, arriving just behind her, quickly recognized the gravity of the situation and took cover near his patrol vehicle. He called out, shots fired, over the radio as he tried to shield himself and returned fire using his .40 caliber handgun. However, Perry's rifle outmatched Scheel's handgun in both range and firepower. Within moments, Scheel was struck multiple times. As he fell to the ground, severely wounded, Perry approached him and, at close range, fired two more shots to ensure Scheel was incapacitated. Both officers were dead within 45 seconds of initiating the traffic stop, marking one of the most brutal and rapid attacks on law enforcement in recent state history. The attack was not only fatal for Breidenbach and Scheel, but nearly resulted in further casualties. Perry, having been shot in the leg during the exchange, retreated to his vehicle, attempting to flee. However, the wound struck a major artery, causing him to collapse shortly afterward. When additional officers arrived, they found Perry still armed with both his AR-15 and a 9mm handgun. According to the Barron County District Attorney's report, the arrival of more officers likely prevented Perry from attempting to harm civilians or officers further, though he was no longer physically capable of firing his weapons. In examining Perry's background, authorities revealed that he had a history of mental health issues and a deep-seated mistrust of law enforcement, particularly after a difficult divorce. While he had been hospitalized for mental health evaluations in 2010 and 2011, his prohibition on firearm possession had lapsed when the order expired in 2011. Since then, Perry had legally amassed several firearms, including the AR-15 used in the attack. Although he had no documented history of violent crime, his erratic behavior had concerned his family for years, especially as he reportedly harbored a growing animosity toward government and law enforcement. The Barron County District Attorney, Brian Wright, in a report on the case, called the incident the epitome of evil and praised the bravery of the two officers who lost their lives trying to protect their community. Wright emphasized that both officers' actions in responding to the situation likely prevented further loss of life, as Perry was poised to continue his violent actions had he been able to escape. Wright's report brought attention to the heroic actions of Breidenbach and Scheel 
and the heartbreaking loss their families and communities now face. This tragic case has since sparked discussions across Wisconsin and the country regarding mental health interventions, the adequacy of firearm access restrictions for those with mental health issues, and the safety protocols available to law enforcement officers in similar high-risk situations. Despite previous mental health interventions and the family's warning to law enforcement about Perry's instability, the events of April 8th revealed gaps in current systems for monitoring individuals deemed a threat to themselves or others. The quick expiration of Perry's firearm restriction and the challenges his family faced in arranging mental health support highlight broader issues in public policy and law enforcement response to mental health crises. The loss of officers Breidenbach and Scheel was a profound reminder of the risks law enforcement officers face daily, particularly when engaging with individuals who may be both heavily armed and in mental distress. As local law enforcement agencies continue to mourn the two officers, the incident has also prompted policymakers to re-evaluate the protocols and laws surrounding firearms and mental health. The tragedy of April 8, 2023, remains etched in the memory of Cameron's residents and serves as a painful illustration of the complex intersection between mental health, gun rights, and public safety. Thank you for watching. The events of April 8, 2023, serve as a somber reminder of the challenges and dangers law enforcement officers face every day. As the community of Cameron remembers officers Breidenbach and Scheel, this tragedy continues to spark vital discussions about mental health support, firearm restrictions, and safety measures for those serving to protect us. If you found this video insightful, please consider subscribing to stay informed on stories that shape our society. Your thoughts on this issue are important. Let us know in the comments below. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.